Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day, launching another week. My buddy Greg said to me, hey, you've got these bookshelves behind you. You ought to do thoughts for the day on the various books in the bookshelves. So I got about five rows of bookshelves. I thought, hey, not a bad idea. So let's start. These books, by the way, I'd love to tell you they're in some really good order and, and they're, they're very deliberately picked. Some of these books are just in there because I got them and I needed a shelf to throw them on, so I threw them up there. Some of them are books I'm reading and studying. Some of them are books that are referenced. Some of them are books that were gifts. Um, uh, but uh, it, it, so there's a wild assortment. And as we look in this first shelf, the one that occurs to me is uh, to talk about is Lex Rex. It's not an original, by the way. The original was published in the 1600s by the Reverend Samuel Rutherford, a Scottish minister. Uh, but it was a profound book in its day. It was a book that, in fact, was ordered to be burned. Um, Samuel Rutherford spent a lot of time in jail for his radical ideas that are encapsulated even within the title of the book. See, lex is the Latin word for law, and rex is the Latin word for king. And Samuel Rutherford lived at the time of a monarchy in England when the exact opposite statement was uh, uh, politically correct, namely Rex Lex instead of Lex Rex. What's the difference you say? Well, is the king the law or is the law the king? See, in England, it was taught that the king was the law, but Samuel Rutherford would have nothing to do with that. Samuel Rutherford believed that there was a law that was greater than the king of England and that the king was not above the law but the law above the king. It would get him arrested. It would get him imprisoned. It would get his books burned, declared illegal. But boy, would it sway ultimately Western civilization. Because the premise of Samuel Rutherford was that no one was above the law. The king could not say that the king could do however the king chose. And that's been the, the, the sway of the law in Western civilization since it finally toppled the monarch where, monarchy where the king was in control. By the way, it's fascinating to me on the cover page. There's one scripture that's quoted. The scripture is from 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 25. And God says, but if you shall still do wickedly, you shall be consumed, both you and your king. The law applies equally to everyone. Nobody's above the law because the law is supposed to be a reflection of the character of God. And what God wishes and teaches for us to do should overrule any of us who think we're beyond the scope of God's control. So, what does that mean for you and me practically today? Well, I think it means that we need to be respectful and mindful of the fact that all of us live subject to God and his rules. We live subject to society and its rules. Now, if those rules violate God's rules, then we don't need to follow them. But assuming they follow God's rules, then they apply to all of us. God is no respecter of persons and neither is his law. There is nobody in the United States of America that's not entitled to be treated fairly under the law. And there's nobody that's above it. Think about it. It's your video thought for today. Tomorrow we'll do another book.